welcome everyone to using actions and filters in WordPress to make plugins your own. So um, just to get a quick scan of the room. So how many people consider themselves kind of WordPress developers? Lots. Wow. Okay. So how many people have used actions and filters before? Oh, geez. <laughs> I will not be offended if you leave during the talk because, yeah, I mean, it is, it's relatively basic uh, talk. They've slotted into the developer uh, slot, but there are some techniques that you might not have thought before on how to find the right filter or plugin or uh, action to use. Um, but yeah, a, a chunk of the talk is you know on what actions and filters are and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll scan through that a bit. And obviously, there are a lot of hands that weren't up, so we'll go from there. So I am Brian Hogg. Uh, BrianHogg.com. This new logo thingy isn't live yet, but it will be. I'll be at the Happening Aspire getting it ready. <laughs> Uh, WP on the side, also not totally launched, but if uh, it's basically going to be just video tutorials uh, for people who are looking to use WordPress to serve uh, clients and make sites uh, on the side from their regular job. So feel free to check it out, sign up, and let me know when it launches. Uh, I was the lead organizer for WordCamp Hamilton 2015. It was great to get it back. We had two tracks. It's kind of like the little brother of WordCamp uh, Toronto, about half the attendees or so, but uh, really good talks and stuff there. And I uh, also authored some plugins, one of which being the event calendar newsletter. So if you've got uh, one of the supported plugins, I'm adding more, uh, and you want to do a newsletter of your events, you can have that uh, uh, you know, formatted into a nice newsletter-friendly format and then paste it into your MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever you use. So it's free. <coughs> so you go into, go for it. So you go into your you know, WordPress admin, you uh, hit add new, and then you search your plethora of 30,000 or so plugins that are in the repository right now. And you find one that does pretty much what you want it to do, but not exactly what you want it to do. And it'd be nice if you could obviously take that plugin, tweak what you want to, and then make that plugin your own so that it'll do exactly what you want it to do. So that's where actions and filters come in. So action. Actions are basically the equivalent of shouting when it, a time, the time comes, hey, this thing's happening right now. Whether someone's listening or not, that's up for debate, it depends, but that's essentially what it does. It can pass some extra data in there at the same time uh, to say, okay, you know, this is happening right now and it's you know, for this post or it's you know, in this category or what have you, so that people who are listening you know, get a little more context as to what's happening. But essentially it's, this thing is happening right now you can't really change the fact that it's happening, and we're just letting you know that it's happened. Filters, on the other hand, are kind of, you know, something's coming in, and we're saying, right, okay, here's the data, you know, that it is right now. Anyone who wants to kind of filter along the way, you can either tweak what that data is, or you can just ignore it and change it completely, whatever you want to do, and also we'll give some context as well. So, okay, here's some information about this post, and about this, you know, about on this page, or whatever. Um, so that you know the context as to what it is. But essentially you can change that value, any, any, uh, you know, any number of filters can change that value and then at the end you get po possibly either the same thing or something completely different. So actions are done using this. So in a plugin that you download, if they uh, you know, provide ways to hook into either actions or filters, they would be doing something like this. So in that plugin there would be a do underscore action call it would have a unique identifier, uh, which would just be whatever they decide to call it um, you know, in their plugin. Hopefully they've kind of prefixed it so it's not just like my action. Hopefully it's you know, their plugin you know, slug or name or something, underscore, and then whatever that action is. And then like I said, they can pass extra data to give some more context. So they can pass any number of arguments along with it to say, okay, maybe this has to do with a post ID. So it would pass the post ID so that you know what that post ID is uh, or anything else. And then you, or what we can do, and what I'll be showing and demoing, is that you can add, then use add action to basically listen to when this action happens. So you, you use the same unique identifier that do action has. Um, actually, I have a pointer. And then you've got the function name, uh, which would then be the function uh, that I'll be demoing as well, that uh, will have whatever code you want to happen when that action fires. And then optionally, uh, you can add the priority. So say there's a whole bunch of people who are listening to that same you know, uh, person yelling, uh, action happening. You would have the priority. So say one, that would mean you want it to try and you know, happen first, like right away. Otherwise, it can go up to, uh, I don't know what the exact limit is, but something much higher. And I think the default's 10. 
So it's right around there. And you can have uh, multiple ones that have the same priority, um, and then it depends on when they're registered. But if you want it to happen sooner, you'd specify one. And then argument count, so those arguments there, if it does pass any extra data, you want that to match the same. So if there's two arguments there, that argument count would be two. Does that make sense? And if, there, if you guys have questions at all during, uh, feel free to ask. So here's an example. So if you've got the plugin action is the unique identifier for that action in your code that you create to then do something when that action happens, you create a function. You'd say handle the plugin action or whatever you want to call your function. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just want it to be unique. You don't want it to be another one that uh, someone else is using. And then in this case, all I'm doing is printing on the screen this thing's happening right now. So say that action was firing at a bunch of different points on the page via you know, the plugin that you're listening to, then that thing, the action is happening now, would be echoed at each time that that action is fired. So if it's like something that's looping, you know, a bunch of posts, and it's happening at every post, it would, you'd see that text at each point. And then you literally just put the name of that unique identifier, add action underneath, and then you would have the name of your function. So that handle the plugin action, and the other thing need to match up. I'm getting a laser pointer, so I can like point to it. Who doesn't like lasers? <coughs> Excellent. Cool. Yay, lasers. Cool. So filters, like I was saying, is something where you can actually change the data. So in the plugin that uh, if they provide this kind of filtering functionality, they would have apply filters there. And it would again have that unique identifier. It would then have the value. So this is the current value that if nobody's listening, nobody filters it, that value will stay the same. And then you've got the argument uh, count. So again, that could be the post ID or any other data that has to do with that filter so that you know, what, you know what the context is, when it needs to be changed, what it is. And then from there, you'd have add filter to then listen to it. So it's very similar to do action, add action, apply filters, add filter. That unique identifier would be the same on both. You'd have your function name, and then you'd have your priority and your argument count. And again, that argument count would match that, and your priority would be where it is. And especially for filters, it could be more important because if someone else is uh, using that same filter, right, and they execute first, and they change the value, then you get it, it's the already modified value, right? So if someone else filters it, changes it, you get it, you're getting that other, uh, you know, that changed value, because that'll be where it is in, in line, based on priority, as to who changes it first, and who changes it last. So another example. So say you're echoing, because again, you're taking that so this is a title, you know, in the plugin, or uh, and then it's, you know, echoing that out. So basically, if no one changes it, that's going to echo out title. But if you go in and you add, use add filter, and then you use this thing called change, you know, change plugin title. You take that title, and then return new title. So it's not even looking at what the original title is, which in this case is title. It's literally just going to say, I don't really care what it is. I'm going to return new title, and that's what I'm changing it to. And then you add that filter, again, you take the same unique identifier, you take the change plugin title, which is the name of that function, and you return it. If you want, you can use the original, you know, the current value of that title, and then just add a new to the beginning, right? So you're taking the value that, uh, you know, is, is the original title name, and then you're just appending something on top. So you can take the original value, change it, instead of just blotting it over completely. And you can also do something like this because we're not, again, looking, you know, before we weren't looking, okay, what is the current value and have some kind of conditional. So in this case, we're saying, okay, if the title is migrate title, then return something different. If it's not, we just return the same thing. So if it's not equal to that title, or for example, if we had other data and we we're looking for like, okay, we only want to change it for this post, we could do something like, okay, look for the post ID. And then if it's that post ID, then we want to change it. If not, leave it alone. And you always have to remember, <laughs> if you're not changing it, to still return the original. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is you're not, you know, it's again, along the line, you have the original title, everyone filters it through, and if someone doesn't bring it back and say, oh, here's the current, everyone has to return what the current value is, otherwise, 
at the end of the line, you're going to have nothing. You're not going to have the right title. So you always have to have this return the value of something, whether it's something you change or the original value. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Question? Yep. Where does all this code live? Yep, so I'll, I'll do a demo and yeah. So there's multiple places it can live. It could be in your theme. It could be, uh, well, the way I'm going to do it is in a, a, like a plugin to modify another plugin. So yeah, I'll show you, I'll demo that for sure. So how do you find out where these things are? Question? Yep. When you refer to the unique identifier, you're yes. referring to unique within the plugin realm of plugins for a given site? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it should be unique across them all. And that's why most plugins will have like, you know, kind of unique prefix. So say the thing's called event calendar, it could be event calendar underscore whatever. So hopefully that's unique, but yeah, there's no guarantee, right? Someone else could use that if they wanted to. So yeah. Any other questions? So, oh, okay. Yeah. The whole thing with the action builders, is that a WordPress? Is that a PHP? Uh, it's WordPress, yeah. Yeah, WordPress added that in to, uh, to allow you to do chaining stuff like this, yeah. Any questions? Cool. So literally, if you want to see if a plugin provides any of this stuff, uh, you have to just basically search the whole plugin files for do action and apply filters. If it doesn't have this, there's nothing for you to hook into. You, you just, you can't do it. So say for the event, just as an example, the events calendar plugin. So it's a plugin where you can have an event calendar on your site. Uh, you as the site admin can go in at events, right? And you can see it. Actually, I'll show you this quick. So it's this. So you get like upcoming events and it shows you all the events and this is what I'll be demoing changing. But essentially you search within that for do action and you got 190 actions that you can hook into. That's a lot, but that's awesome. You know, they're giving you that, those hooks that you can use if you know how to find them. Apply filters, same thing. So 442 <laughs> different filters that you can hook into just in this one plugin alone. And that's a lot, obviously. So then you look at Jetpack. So this is how you actually, you know, search. So you need an editor that you can do multiple, you can search for in multiple files. I like PHP Storm. It's just, it's, you know, PHP is the language that WordPress is built on. Uh, it's got a lot of functionality that helps with that. But there's also, uh, you know, Sublime Text. Like, there's so many text editors that allow you to search within a bunch of files for a specific string. So in this case, you'd use, you know, so do action. And I'm, you say I've got it restricted to just that directory, so I'm just searching within Jetpack as an example. So if I hit find, I get 197 occurrences. So there's now 197 actions that I can hook into. And the same thing, if I search for apply filters, I'd see how many uh, filters there were, which I could do. Lots. <laughs> 391, which is surprising, actually, because Jetpack, if you don't know Jetpack, it's like a mash of 30 different plugins, 34, I think, uh, different plugins all in one. So I'm surprised there aren't more. <laughs> 42 or so, and it's just one plugin, whereas this is a mash of a bunch and it's, it's got less. So I found that surprising. But. So you basically got to search for that, and if there aren't any, there's nothing you can do to modify that plugin without hacking that plugin itself, which I'll show you. Yep. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so sometimes it's a very good point. Yeah, so sometimes the plugin is using, you know, standard WordPress stuff. So there might be, you know, a filter or action that you can hook into that's standard to WordPress and then use that. But yeah, the technique that I'm going to show and stuff, it, it'd be harder to find that one. So you might have to either contact the plugin author or, you know, uh, read through the code and stuff. So, yep. How does a plugin author decide whether to, to, to add new actions or apply to it? That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to them, right? So if there's something that they kind of have a feeling that people are going to want to modify, you know, if, if they're thinking about what other people are going to do to it, then they'll add it in. Sometimes they won't. You know, sometimes maybe there's something you want to modify, but maybe they're worried that people are going to modify it in the wrong way and it's going to break everything or whatever. Uh, then they might not add that in. So, yeah, a lot of times, I mean, like for WordPress itself, uh, people have requested, you know, oh, I want to be able to change this thing. Can we add a filter or an action? And, yeah, I've got a list of, like, you know, what if you can't find that action or filter or it doesn't exist? You know, contact the author and, and tell them to add it in kind of thing, right? But, yeah, it's up to them. So by hacking, you mean add a do action? Yes, or no, even even just you know hacking it to do what you do, and I'll I'll show that like oh, you know the so the wrong way to do it. 
You yeah. can go in, oh, so that's the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you hack it and then you give it back to the plugin author, right? And say, can you release a new version of your plugin, you know, uh, with this new action in there? Now you're not hacking it anymore. Now everyone has that action. Everything's good. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep, which I'll, I'll also demo. Should probably get to the demo soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you find the one that you need? So there's a bunch of different things. You can look at the plugin documentation, if any. A lot of plugins don't have it, but there might be comments, or you could look at forums and Google. Google's uh, Stack Overflow, those are your friends. Uh, you can look at the code itself. So if it's well structured, you might it might be pretty obvious, you know, like where uh, the part of the plugin is that you want to change. You look in there and you just look for do action and apply filters and see if there's anything there. And then you can also look at uh, you know, the output of the plugin. So for example, that events calendar plugin, which I'll be demoing, gives you a list of uh, events. And you can see the event details and all that stuff. So you can look at that output and then try and backtrack and see if you can find an action or a filter that you can use. So I'll demo that. Demo time. Yay. <coughs> all right, so if we go to, so it's uh, another WordCamp I'll be attending in a couple weeks, WordCamp Ann Arbor. So we've got uh, the location and the title and the date and everything else. And you know, you set this up and great and it works. But then the client's like, you know what? Like for a lot of events, the location might change. You know, like it, it might be subject to change. They shouldn't look at this now and then never come back to the site. Uh, so we want to add a little disclaimer, right? So they kind of want to add it here underneath the venue. So in, this is, I'm using Chrome, uh, Firefox, and I think even Internet Explorer has similar uh, functionality. But essentially, you would right click around where they want to put this disclaimer saying the location may change, subject to change. And you would use inspect element. Let's see if I can bump up that size. All right. So I want to add this underneath here. So if I kind of highlight through. And look at where that is. Yeah, so it's this this div here, and if I scroll back up, it's nice too. As you're like highlighting it, you can see, you know, make sure that you're at the right spot. So you see something that looks pretty close to what it could be, right? This tribe events meta group venue seems like something that would be unique to this one spot uh, that this box is in, and so we can maybe search the plugin code to see where that's being generated and if there are any actions or filters that we can use to inject a little disclaimer. So if I, you can either you know, type it out or I'm just gonna try copying and pasting it. And you flip back to your code. So I've got this running locally on my machine, uh, WordPress, but if you've got it hosted somewhere on a, on a staging site, I would never do this on a production site, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Uh, but you, you'd want to invest in an editor uh, and tool that allows you to modify the files uh, on your computer, save it, and then have it automatically upload. Because it's really annoying if you're going through the files, you're, you're searching, you're making a change, and you gotta drag and drop the change uh, file over using like an FTP program or something. Like you want it to save it and then have it automatically go over. So there are a lot of tools that can do this. On Mac, there's uh, Transmit, which I've got here, which allows you to just double click a file, edit it, and then save it, and it'll just automatically upload back. Or you can set it up locally, and hopefully there's a talk on how to do that. Otherwise, I can point you in the right direction. So if I look at the events calendar, so that's that plugin, and I search for that text. So I get a couple results. I get this one here, which I think I can just, no, nope, can't zoom in. I've got the, you know, this is before, and it's got this thing here, but it doesn't really look like that div. Whoop, that div that I had there, right? It's like class and whatever. So if I look for another one, I've got this venue.php that looks promising, and I've got the div, which looks pretty much exactly like what was on that page. Awesome. So if I look at that result, sure enough, it looks pretty much the div and everything else that we had before. So we've got uh, you know, the top thing, we've got the venue name, we've got this do action thing here. And if I scroll down, right, you've got the website, so that's website here, but there is no website, it's optional, like events don't need a phone number or a website. Uh, but then you've got this thing at the end, tribe events single meta venue section end. <laughs> so it's a very long action name. That's uh, a good development. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, they've been around for a while. So, uh, so they've got this action and it looks pretty much how it is. So 
What I could do, which you shouldn't do, and I'll show you why, is you could modify the plugin itself, right? <laughs> and put, you know, in uh, bold text, the location is subject to change. Save. Uh, go back. Refresh. Yay, we're done. No. <laughs> so we've got the code there, and, it, and we know we're, we know at least this is a good way to see if you found the right thing. But the problem with this is that if, for example, actually, this plugin is due for an update. <laughs> so it's on you know 3.1 or 3.12.1, 3.1.3 is out of beta. If I hit update now, that's gone. That uh, disclaimer that I just put in. So we don't want to do that. So actually, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Assuming the Wi-Fi works. Hopefully, maybe. <coughs> da -da. Oh, it's thinking about it. You guys are tweeting too much. That's Random question. <laughs> what do you use for a vocal development service? Me? Uh, so v uh, VVV. Very, I can never remember what it's called. It's something like 10up. Is it 10up? Okay. Uh, they did, uh, yeah, like a tool to be able to spin up uh, WordPress sites really easily. And then another tool, VV, create to create more development sites. So you can see here, I've got WordCamp.dev, and that's like on my local machine kind of thing. So. Yeah? Is there something, just asking, is there yep. something for plugins like child games? Right. Is there, is, there, is there an approach to do child plugins? Uh, essentially, yeah. And that's, I'll show that. It's, it's not quite, I, I think I, I call it functional plugins. I, I don't know if there's a technical term for it, but uh, so this isn't updating, so hopefully I didn't break everything. <laughs> but essentially, uh, no, so it's still there, so that's fine. But had that updated and I refreshed here, it would have been gone. So what do you do? So obviously we want to use that action instead. So to go to your point, so what I prefer to do, especially if I'm making a bunch of changes to a single plugin to make it my own, I want to cre essentially create a very simple plugin to put that code, the action and filter code, to modify that plugin within this function. So I'll show you how that works. So if you haven't created a plugin before, it's fine. So you can either create a single file in your WP content and then plugins. Uh, literally, all you need is like a single PHP file and then some specific stuff at the top, which I'll show you. But in case you're going to have something maybe more complicated, maybe during these actions or filters, you're like including some styling or an image or something. Um, I, it's much better to create a folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it uh, something like the events calendar modifications, right? Whatever you want to call it. There's no you know, restriction. And then within that folder, I'm going to create, you know, similar if you look to the events calendar, see how it's got the events calendar.php. That's like their main uh, plugin file. So I'm literally going to create a new blank file called uh, the same thing that I just named that directory. So in this case, the events calendar modifications.php, right? So in PHP Storm, it creates, you know, puts your little PHP tag at the top and puts the stuff. You need to delete that. And then I, you know, I never remember exactly what uh, the, the code is that you put at the top. But it's, it's documented if you just Google for like WordPress plugin header code, or you just go to another plugins file, like this one, and literally just copy and paste this top part. So this top part just tells you, you know, what, uh, you know, tells WordPress that it's a plugin, uh, that it's made by this author, has this license, it's that version, this description, all that stuff. So if I literally copy it over into the file I just created, and then rename it, obviously, right? So I want to be modifications. Changed, exclamation mark. <laughs> I'll just name it, uh, you know, version 1.0. <clears throat> Author is yourself. Author URI. And only a subset of these are optional, but this text domain, if you ever see it, is basically if you have any uh, internationalization, so language changes. So if you want, you know, things to change, so you can just take that out. And license, you know, by default, it should be GPL v2. Um, but again, Keep just it the same as the plugin. Yeah, yeah, ideally. And really, I mean, it, I think by default, it needs to be GPL for WordPress anyway. Uh, if it's because the plugin is dependent on WordPress, and yeah, that's all another chat. So here, so now I've got the plugin. It doesn't do anything, but now if I go into my plugin list, I've essentially created a you know a child plugin, right? So I've created a very simple plugin that I'll then put all these actions and filters into. 
to modify the events counter. So for it to work, you have to activate it. If you don't activate it and you refresh and panic, <laughs> don't worry. Let's go back to your plugins list and activate it there. And so if I go back into here, into the events calendar, or sorry, the venue.php where we found that, I want to remove this because, again, if I update it, this will be gone. Right? Remove that. And actually, maybe I'll copy and paste that. No, I'll just delete it for now. And then I'll just save it so it's uh, back to how it was before. So this is the action that I want to hook into, right? So if you remember the code from before, we need to literally just go function. And then, again, you just name it something unique. So I'm going to call, like, the events calendar mods, you know, the event calendar mods. So again, there's very little chance that there'll be another plugin that uses that same little beginning part. And so it, it should be unique across any plugins that you have installed. And this will be uh, you know, location disclaimer, right? Just so it's something that I know, OK, this is probably going to output a location disclaimer. And I want to echo. So instead of me just throwing it in there, I'm going to put it the location is subject to change. This is nice, so PHP Storm, it like completes some stuff for you. And then right underneath that, you do add action. You have to go back you know, to here, copy that unique identifier. <coughs> and then you want to copy the name of the function that you just made. So it doesn't need to be named exactly this. It just needs to match here. <coughs> now in this case, because there's no, remember how it had the uh, optional arguments <coughs> that you could have at the end, extra data? There's no extra data here. And I don't really care what priority it outputs in right now. Uh, so I don't need to specify that either. So all you need uh, at a minimum is this, the name of the unique identifier and the name of your function. And if you save that, and because I've activated the plugin, it'll be there. Refresh. Yay. So it's still there. So, But now in this case, we haven't modified the original plugin. So if I update it, that, uh, that disclaimer will still be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? Yeah. Yep. So there's um, I've got a slide coming up, but yeah, there's essentially you can uh, you know either submit a patch if they provide some way of you you know putting the do action in there and then saying hey can you like you know upload this new version of the plugin with the do action uh, or you can ask the developer to do it like hey I want to do this thing can you add an action here um, those are pretty much the only options because <laughs> otherwise you're going to have to modify that plugin, right? Or, you know, worst case, you could create a copy of that plugin, right? Name it something else. Um, you know, you can uh, upload, update the version, right? So, you know how it auto updates uh, the the original plugin itself based on this version. You could <laughs> make this like a hundred, you know, <laughs> version a thousand. So then that way it'll never update, right. but then you're kind of running into bad territory because what if there's a security issue with that plugin? They release an update, you never get it, and now your site's insecure, right? So, um, yeah, really the best option is to contact the plugin author, and hopefully they'll add that action for you. Fingers crossed. By doing this, I, like, for my situation, I yep. have a plugin that has certain templates that it uses. It's a Ben Espresso. Okay, yep. Yeah, have yep. you used it? Mm -hmm. uh, Not recently, but yeah. <laughs> so there's like a short code where you have people with a ticket selector, yep. and I don't like how that looks, so I want to change the template for it. Right. So for now, I've just swapped out my habit. Yeah. <laughs> so would yeah. I just put my new HTML files in my plugin that I'm creating on the site? Depending, yeah, because they would have to create, they would have to give you probably a filter to modify what template file is being loaded. Okay. Whether they provide that or not, it depends. But at least Event Espresso is a good example because that's a paid plugin, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got a license for that, you should be able to contact them and be like, hey, I want to swap out the template, how do I do it? Mm -hmm. Either they'll tell you where to find it in the documentation or give you an example code on how to do it, or they'll be like, hey, thanks for the feature request. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll add that maybe at some they, point. They right? also hit their forum, so you have to pay to look at the Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. yeah. Even though you <clears throat> plug No, no. Oh, OK, pay. good, yeah. <laughs> That'd be horrible, yeah. <laughs> if you pay, you have access, but you can if you don't. <clears throat> right. Yeah, yeah, so, yep. So yeah, essentially, yeah, contacting them is, is the best way to do it, especially for a paid plugin. Yeah, and hopefully they'll give you a way to do it. Yep, cool. So that's one example. Any other questions on that one? Uh, it's not, not so much a question, just um, this is a great solution and definitely 
probably the cleanest way to go. There is actually a plugin that can replace content after it's been generated with other content. Um, it's called Real Time Find and Replace. Nice. Much easier for just simple text based swapping in and out. Um, you can't use it to, to insert functionality or anything, so this is obviously the way to go if you've got yeah. those kinds of needs. But if you can't talk to the developer or whatever and you need to swap out what a plugin is doing, um, there's a plugin for cool. that. So, what is that plugin again? So, it's in the mic. Uh, I just realized I should be repeating questions. Uh, <laughs> real time find and replace. Real time find and replace. Okay, cool. Yeah, I haven't seen that plugin. So, that's just for simple text changes. Yeah. Cool. Good. I, uh, I should state it happens to be. My plugin. Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 just, just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Little plug, totally yeah. Free. 100 bucks a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Good. All right. So, cool. So, if there are no more, so, that's one example of an action. So, what about a filter? So, you know, sometimes, so this plugin, this real time search and replace might be able to do something like this. But say you want, you know, your client or you don't want, doesn't want to have venue, you want to have location, right? Like, you know, venue sounds maybe too formal, I don't know, whatever. So you want to change that venue. So again, you can do a similar thing where you're, you're trying to find out where this is in the code. Uh, luckily, again, great plugin author, and that's kind of why I picked this one. Some, a lot of plugins aren't going to be this easy to find stuff, but, uh, but again, you can contact the developer if you can't find it. So you, you know, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Now, in this case, I don't really have to search all files because <coughs> chances are it's in the venue.php for the venue text, right? Um, so I look at it and I go, cool, okay, here's the venue title, sorta. So they've got this thing, right? That's, uh, if you haven't seen it, underscore E is so you can do translation. So by default, it could be English, but then they can translate to other languages. And they've got this function here, tribe get venue label singular. So that, looks like it's outputting the string venue. Um, and the great thing about, so you want to find out where this is. So luckily with PHP Storm, you can hold command and then click on it, and it'll just automatically find out where that function is defined. Otherwise, you'd have to search for it. So again, it's, if you're doing this kind of stuff, it's great to get you know, an uh, editor that allows you to do uh, this kind of stuff. But here we go, great. Now I've got apply filters, like we saw before. And it's got try venue label singular. And you've got venue here. So sweet. So now I want to modify that. So I'm going to go into my uh, the events calendar modifications plugin and just add another one under here. So function, uh, just to be consistent, again, I'm going to use the same prefix to try and not have any conflicts with other plugins. And I'm going to see, uh, you know, maybe I'll call it venue to location. And for a filter, you need the value, at least. So in this case, they're not passing any other uh, you know, arguments, right? any extra data. This isn't dependent on the current event ID or anything. It's just going to be the same title for every event. So if I want to change that, now I can do, if I just want to just blanket say that it's location, I can do this. right? So I don't, I, I don't care what the current value for venue is, I can do this. Problem being is that if you've got something like this where it's uh, right back here, where it can be translated, you know, so that venue can look as uh, location or, or any other language. Uh, now you've changed, now every language is going to be location, which is probably not good. So what I'm going to do here is do, like we saw on the other slide, is, you know, check to see, is it venue? Right? So is that string currently value or venue? Right, so it's English and it's venue right now. So if it is, now I'm gonna set the value to location. Okay, and then I'm just gonna return the value. So literally, if it's venue, it'll change the location. If it's not, it won't change it at all. It'll just return back what it is already. So if I save that, and then I wanna add, and then you have to do the add filter to listen to that filter. And you're going to have that filter name, which I don't remember. So I'll copy and paste that over. Try venue label. And then again, similar to add action, it'll be the name of the function you just created. <clears throat> and again, because we don't care what priority, that would be the next parameter. And then the next one would be arguments. And that, in just one sec, I'll just refresh just so you can see that works. Location. How would you leave the translation ability in there? Uh, there, well, it's. Could you just yeah. wrap your location and it gets next pop, You could, yeah. 
So then, but that, then that we adding a new string to the, uh, you know, to the context, right? So you need a new translation file, which would then pick up that string with your plugin, which probably wouldn't happen. So yeah, there's no easy oh, way. Oh, you would be able to just, just add that underscore underscore. Yeah, I mean, like you could here. So what they're saying, right, to be able to translate it. Yeah. But then oh, that's. Then you'd have to create a Oh, right. right. It's not going to be, the plugin isn't going to know about location. And, and as well, you'd add the text domain, which I think is the events calendar. Right. But again, it's because it's our plugin and it's not there, it's not going to be there. So you could then create, you could do this, uh, calendar modifications, right? And actually, you could just have, get rid of this, right? Yeah. That's what I was so you could do something like this, but then you'd have to look into, okay, how do you do, it's, it's not that complex, but basically you now have to create your own translation file and then translate location for all the languages that you're gonna support so in your site. So WPML or one of those things will yeah, yeah, yeah. this yep. and say, yep. you know, events calendar modified yep. has a string you can translate. Yep, exactly, so, yep. so yep, so you can do that. And then the, your plugin will translate that. Do you have to add the uh, the which? Yes, if you want. Yeah, and that just makes it easier to, I'm pretty sure most things will scan this string yeah. in any of the things. So even if it's not there, but yeah, it's, it's good practice, you're right, to have that at the top. I, I think you answered my question. Okay. I was just wondering why you tested the value instead of the language. Right, and, yeah. And which, yeah, that's totally another option as well. Yeah, you could test, say, is it English? You know, uh, Canadian or UK or, yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Any other thighs like a plan? Yeah, Canadian, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Venue, eh? <laughs> Be blimey or something for UK, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, yeah, are there any other questions Sorry, or not? Are you, yep. you going to do a few steps just the way, the way you originally had it yep. before you did the double underscore? Oh, okay, sure, yeah, absolutely. I just want to ask you something really silly, but. Okay, perfect, yeah. Keep going, keep going, Sorry, that's fine. Why? Oh yeah, so those are, yeah, that's like a, I think I saw it first in a WordPress thing, it's called Yoda condition, <laughs> and then, which is cool, <laughs> say but not do, I don't know what the Yoda thing is, but basically it's in that way you can't, because if, if you had it the other way, uh, and you did this, and you accidentally only put one equal, you're, right, you're always, you're always now going to be setting value to venue, it's just basically, it, it prevents you from accidentally putting one equal sign there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And wouldn't you have also put the triple equal sign? You could, yeah. If you want to check the type, yeah. You can definitely do that, yeah. Any other questions that? So, I've only got about 10 minutes. Um, what is that called, you said? Yoda, Yoda conditions, yeah. <laughs> Forget why, but it's, yeah. <laughs> I love the name. Cool. So, yeah, I've got a couple more slides. So, I was going to show, you know, kind of a more complex uh, one. Um, actually, I'll, I'll see if I can quickly do it. So event costs. So say I don't really trust you know, what the user, say a user is adding events. Uh, I want it to have two decimal places. You know, so I want it to be, no matter what, I want it to have two decimal places, if it's a number. Because they could actually put in cost free, the text free, right? Um, so if I search for this, event costs, you know, very similar technique. Uh, and I've got some styling stuff in there as well. So that's not really what I want. That whole meta before thing, meta thing, there you go. So here, here's an example of something where they don't really give you an easy way to modify that. Um, so if you've got a, you got event cost, so we found the location, right, where that cost is being output, but as you can see, it's still, all it's doing is escaping it to make sure that the text is sanitized for output, and you've got cost here. There's no filter here. So now you've got to backtrack and see, okay, where is cost being obtained from, right? Um, so if you do, I think it's like event costs, might be an underscore actually. Uh, yeah, pretty sure it's underscore. If you're searching around, you've got like a, your event class, it's got event cost being equal to something, still not finding it, you got template tags, maybe general, oh, get formatted event costs. <laughs> That looks like it could be it. Oh, there. So now there's a filter. So it's not in the same location, but there's apply filters with a tribe get cost. 
And now you can see an example where they're giving you other data. So they're saying, okay, what's the uh, post ID, like the way that they save it as, as posts of an, a type event. And then they have the with currency symbol. So when you go to add an event, you can uh, insert the currency symbol. So in our case, it's a dollar sign. It could be a pound symbol, euro, whatever. Um, and so you've got that data there. But again, there's no way because this is already going to have the you know dollar sign 20. There's no easy way to just make the 20 have decimal places on it. So it did create a solution, like, but you, you basically had to do something like this, where you're using that uh, try to get cost filter, and you're, you're getting, you're using their utility to get the cost. You're looking to see is there a currency symbol, you're getting the event cost. Uh, if it has the currency symbol at the beginning, otherwise without. So then now after this, we have the number, so just 20. And then we're checking to see if it's numeric. So is it just 20, or did they type free, or did they type pay what you can? <laughs> you know, like they can type anything in there. Uh, and if it is numeric, now I'm going to replace that cost, the 20, with a two decimal place version of the same thing. So I mean, it's and otherwise, if it's not, then I just again return the original cost value. So you know, it's it depends. Again, it would have been nice if they would have created you know another filter there maybe, but. You know, if you keep digging, there could be ways to do it. Uh, it just depends what they give. So, as I've kind of alluded to before, so that's what we did. It's cost formatting, venue to location, message to verify. So if you can't <laughs> find the one you need nicely, <laughs> ask the developer. I'm sure if you guys have poked around in the forums at all, I'd be like, why didn't you get back to me in two hours? I've got this project. Ah! They're doing this for free a lot of the times, right? So uh, there's no obligation for a plugin developer to reply to you or give you an answer or do anything. I mean, they're, they're putting, it's great if they maintain it and whatever, but they're putting it out there to try and help people. Maybe they're doing it as an exercise in their spare time. And they just don't have hours a week to support you, right? So you can nicely ask them in the forum. Hopefully they'll reply, but they might not. Uh, you know, maybe they've listed in there, like in the plugins information, they might have a link to their website. Maybe you can ping them there. Try not to stalk them too much. <laughs> you know, don't message them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> Help me now. Uh, the support forums. And then you can also look to see if there's a paid version. So as the example, Event Espresso uh, is a paid plugin. Uh, I don't think they have a, do they have a free version, the trial? Yeah. So they have a free version, so that, you know, they, but a lot of them will say, hey, we can help you. but you know, buy a license to the pro version and then you can submit a ticket or whatever. Right? Gravity Forms is a good example of that. <laughs> so hopefully they'll help you if they have a pro version. Or again, if they provide a way, you know, if you've got done a bit of development and even if you don't, like if there's a, a repository like on GitHub or somewhere um, that can make it easy to add, you know, go into that code, that file, say the venue.php and add and apply filters or a do action. Uh, then you can say, hey, can you, you know, apply this to the plugin and hopefully next time then they release it, It'll have that do action. Everyone will have it. Everyone's happy. So go out and make uh, plugins your own. <clears throat> the slides are there if you need them. And yeah, any other questions in the two minutes? That we have? No? Great. Cool. I'll be here uh, most. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just look everywhere else. Yeah, sorry. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. There's, so the question was, if you've got a theme, like, because you can use this technique, obviously, for themes as well that give you hooks and filters, or you've got a whole bunch of plugins that you're doing, whatever, right? So kind of depends. I mean, if you uh, you could put it, you know, you, it's not a good idea to just throw it in functions.php of like a child theme. You could do that, uh, or you could use functions and include other files, right? Like it, how you organize it's up to you. If it's something that's just for your site and you know you won't use on any other sites, like it's very unique to this one, then maybe you just make one plugin that's like, you know, this site name modifications, whatever, right? And you put for all the plugin ones in there. Uh, but especially once, if it starts to get a bit long and there's like 10 plugins you're modifying, then you might want to, you know, organize it better so that it's just quick, you know, if you need to either make a change or see what you did before, uh, you can just quickly find it and go from there. But yeah, it, there's no, no one answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Can we use the must use plugins folder? The which, sorry? The must use plugins folder. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a way to force it on someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the must use plugins. Yeah, so if you put it in there, it has to be used, can't be deactivated. And yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, if. Well, if, if 
Yeah, exactly. If it's a client site and you're giving them admin access, like a lot of times they'll restrict them so they can't uh, go into the plugins folder. Uh, and if, if I'm maintaining, you know, which, which updates happen and when, then I hide the plugins thing. But yeah, otherwise you can put it. Yeah, exactly. Or you accidentally deactivate it and then, yeah, yeah. everything breaks. <laughs> Yeah, so totally, yeah, you can put it in the must-use uh, plugins folder if you want. And another thing as well, I mean, if you're doing stuff like this, uh, if people were at the last talk on uh, multi-site um, and you're doing something like this, like, learn a little bit. You don't have to be a Git or Subversion. I much prefer Git wizard, but definitely you want to, you know, when you're making changes to this functionality plugin, you want to be saving your versions, right, uh, using something like Git or some other version control. And then that way, if you make a change and then modify and something breaks, or maybe you know, the, the uh, client doesn't like how you did it, very quick for you to roll back, see what changes you made, instead of just everything being on one version, and then you can't tell what you did. Cool. All right. Again, I'll be around. So any other questions over here? <coughs>